Where do you fall? To which category do you belong? Are you the blessed man or a wicked man? This psalm is the key to answering those questions. Now, as I said, it, this is a rich psalm, and for that reason, I'll mostly focus on the first three verses. And we'll be looking at the identities, activities, and the fecundity of the blessed man. So first, identity of the blessed man. It says, how blessed is man, the man? The word blessed here has two interrelated senses, or as A.W. Pink uh, put it, it has a double force. First, and most importantly, the word conveys that God's favor, uh, as opposed to his curse, is resting upon this man. We see this in connection between God's favor and being uh, blessed all throughout the Old Testament. For example, Noah finds uh, favor in God's eyes and is delivered from the wrath to come. After the floodwaters subside, God blesses Noah and his sons. However, the best example is the one outlined by Paul in Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 through 14. The apostle explains, For as many as are of the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to perform them. Now that no one is justified by the law before God it is evident. For the righteous man shall live by faith. However, the law is not of faith. On the contrary, he who practices them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, in order that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we would receive the promise of spirit through faith. Like Noah and Jacob before us, we are completely undeserving of God's favor. We haven't kept God's law. We're law breakers. We are sinners. Therefore, God's curse rightly rests on us. We deserve to be judged. God would be just to overwhelm us in the flood or slay us at the hand of an angry brother. But thanks be to God that his grace has been made available through the finished work of Christ. He hung on the cross, and in doing so, Christ became a curse for us in order that the blessing of Abraham might come to the world. What exactly is the blessing of Abraham? Listen again to the words of Paul in Galatians 3. Even so, Abraham believed God and was reckoned to him as righteousness. Therefore, be sure that it is those who are of faith who are sons of Abraham. The scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, All the nations will be blessed in you. So then, who are of faith are blessed with Abraham, the believer. The blessing of Abraham is that we receive God's grace by faith, not by works. In other words, our justification before God is by faith and faith alone. Our confidence comes not from our works but from the finished work of Christ Jesus. This is what it means to be a blessed man. It means to have the grace of God resting on you. It means to be born again. So I want you to think of a Christian when I speak of the blessed man and of a non-Christian when I speak of a wicked man. 